Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Mark again. Thanks for coming back to the Swamp and Stomp YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so now so you can catch all of our future videos. Now, if you follow our Instagram, you may have seen my post yesterday, and then you already know that this weekend I kind of screwed up. Uh, I shot a doe, but I gut shot her. Uh, I don't really know exactly what happened, uh, but my best explanation is that I, I just didn't quite see her right and I, ju I just I just put the, the pin or the crosshair on the wrong spot and, and I pulled the trigger and uh, so I hit her kind of far back and uh, as a result she uh, she ran down and she bedded down like 20 yards away and uh, and then later when I discovered the arrow was covered in guts uh, she heard me and she got up and moved um, so I backed out of there and I got a tracking dog to come out the next morning uh, and uh, Mickey Davis from the Florida Blood Trailing Network came out with his dog June and uh, she was able to find that deer in uh, a matter of minutes. Uh, she tracked it like 500 yards. Um, I would have never ever found that deer without without Mickey and, and his dog. So uh, I really, if you're watching Mickey, thank you so much for coming out. Uh, and, and thank you uh, to your dog, Jim, for, uh, for helping out. Um, those of you who are watching, who are new to this concept of getting a tracking dog, um, basically, if you made a bad shot or if you shot a deer and you lose blood, you can't find the trail, uh, just don't be stubborn back out, call somebody. Uh, if you go on Facebook and look up the Florida Blood Trailing Network, you can uh, you can get on there and, and post that you shot one and say wherever it is. And usually you get somebody to come out and uh, and track your deer for you. And, and it's really just the best way to go about it because we really owe it to these animals uh, to get the best recovery rate. So so uh, just keep that resource in mind. It's a really awesome resource. And, you know, when they come out and do their thing, they, they don't charge you anything for it. It's a free service, but, you know, make sure you tip them generously because they really don't have to do it. And, and I, for one, am super appreciative that uh, these guys are willing to do this. But anyway, uh, here's, uh, here's the shot, and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it afterwards. <clears throat> She's down. <sighs> that was a doe. She ran right in there. I didn't see her come out. I think she went down. I'm not sure.
All right, guys, so here's the deal. Last night, seven o'clock, I shot a doe. I messed up, <clears throat> I shot a little too far to the back, and I got guts. So I backed out, um, cause I saw where she went down, and I've been trying to find a dog to come and help me out. I had two dogs maybe lined up, but one of them isn't gonna be here for a while. The other one, I'm not hearing back from the guy. And the sun's coming up and she's gonna be in the sun pretty soon. So I'm gonna start looking right now. I'm gonna try and go as carefully as I can so I don't screw up the scent in case I do need to get a dog later. But I feel like if I don't get her soon, <clears throat> there's not gonna be any point. So here we go. So another thing I actually wanted to bring up, uh, and this is a perfect opportunity to do it, is handling the meat of a, of a gut shot deer or one that's been left out for a long time. Now, uh, a lot of people were really concerned and giving me crap, even the guy at the check station when I came out with it and told him I'd shot it the night before, um, was telling me not to do it, the meat's gone bad, you're going to get sick and all this stuff. And that's just not true. I mean, it's all, it's all dependent on the situation. She was laying in the shade. It was relatively cool overnight. It was like 64 degrees overnight. I shot her right at sunset. So she didn't have the sun on her and she stayed pretty cool. Granted, she probably also didn't die until like four or five in the morning because she was gut shot. So she'd really only been dead for probably four or five hours once I'd found her. Uh, and so uh, you know, I had a feeling the meat was going to be fine, and when I got to her, I put my hands on her, and she was cold. You know, she was nice and cool. She wasn't hot at all. Uh, so I had a feeling the meat was going to be fine. You know, uh, I think a lot of people would just say, screw it, we're just going to leave it in the woods because I don't want to claim this, I don't want to fill a tag. Um, you know, but we really owe it to these animals to do the best that we can to get as much meat off them as possible. I mean. I took its life. Uh, that's that's not for nothing. That's that's a pretty big deal to me, and so I'm gonna do my very best to use that meat. And you know, I even said to people, I was like, look, if I can't eat it, I can still make dog food out of it or something. So, anyway, the thing is though, when you walk up to an animal that's been gut shot, whether it's been left out for a long time or not, it's gonna stink. They smell terrible. Their guts are full of basically poop, you know, it smells terrible. Um, and so when you smell that, you tend to get the inclination to be like, that's gone bad, I'm gonna leave it behind. But it's really just the guts that you're smelling. Now, I don't advise you use any of the meat that's been in contact with some of that gut contents, but in this case, I was still able to harvest uh, all four quarters, um, the back straps, and the neck. You know, obviously I can't get the rib meat, I can't get the tenderloins and things like that, but most of the meat was still fine. So, uh, just because I was a little bit concerned about, uh, you know, whether this meat was still good, uh, after I went and I cleaned it all up, I rinsed it down, and I was sitting there smelling the meat, and the meat smelled fine. Uh, when we got out of the woods that evening, we cut off a piece of backstrap and grilled it up, and it is literally the best backstrap that I have ever ever eaten in my life. Now I don't know if that's because it laid out for a while and some of those collagen fibers started breaking down because that meat was tender. Like the most tender deer meat I've ever had. Or if it's just because it was a young doe, I don't really know 
uh, which one was. I've never shot a doe that small before, so I really don't actually know which one made it so tender. Anyway, the point is that I screwed up. I made a bad shot. It was gut shot, but I was determined to turn a shitty situation into a good situation. So getting that tracking dog was crucial. And again, I want to thank Mickey Davis and his dog June for coming out. And for any of you who are not aware of this, especially a lot of you that are new hunters, uh, if you get in a situation where you cannot find a deer, don't go tromping around in the woods trying to find it. Uh, back out, leave as much of the scent where it is, and get on Facebook and go to the Florida Blood Trailing Network and post on there that you need a dog and where you are and somebody will usually be available to come out and track it and it is amazing to watch these dogs work. This dog literally came in, she took one sniff of that arrow and she took off like a bullet. She was gone and she ran right down the track that the, the dog or that the deer had walked down and she went 500 yards right to my deer. I couldn't believe it, you know. And this is not the first time I've, I've gotten a dog and it's really just amazing to watch. So, you know, we are not good at tracking. So if you make a bad shot or you lose blood, just get a tracking dog. We really owe it to these animals to try and recover them. All right, guys, I'm gonna stop talking. This video has gotten long enough. Um, thank you for tuning in to the Swamp and Stomp YouTube channel. Um, we really appreciate all of the support that we've been getting for the past couple of years. And um, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that now. We're always trying to put out videos uh, about DIY projects related to hunting or just ways to hunt in Florida. So uh, if that kind of thing interests you, make sure that you subscribe. And um, as always, stay safe, be diligent, and good luck in the woods.